Hello! Today we're going to take a look at how to do custom formatting for multi-line text fields using plain text and then formatting it to look how we want and also doing custom logging functions. Typically in SharePoint we want to do things like add notes to a project based on updates that we're doing. We're going to go through live examples and I'm going to show you how to change what SharePoint does out of the box. We'll take a look at some of the limitations in terms of how SharePoint normally works with that and then we're going to apply our own custom formatting and use our own approach to improve that functionality to get exactly what we want. So now let's get SharePoint smart! In SharePoint and we're going to take a look at the out-of-the-box functionality first so uh, we're going to start with some real basic concepts I just have four fields in view I've got the title field and I have a couple of fields I've created uh, one's called add note that's a simple text field in SharePoint I have a field called note log that is a field with multi-line and it's plain text um, the examples I'm going to show, we need plain text because rich text formatting is not yet something that can be adjusted through column formatting in SharePoint. And then the last field is just the modify by. We do need to include that in the view for some of this functionality to work. Now, when we go into the editor, um, this is just our standard SharePoint interface. Um, put in some information here. Okay, and then this is the multi-line text field. In particular, I want to emphasize what's going on here when we have a large amount of information and how SharePoint handles that. So I'm going to do some copy and paste for that. All right, put a few of those. I'm just doing some copy and paste. Okay, so you can imagine, you know, any kind of content you want, but um, we want to look at what SharePoint's doing. Okay, so SharePoint's automatically going to truncate that. It's going to cut that off because obviously we don't want to stretch out the row record and then not be able to see any other information. This makes sense. Obviously, um, we want our interface to look good, but it's not especially user friendly. We see a little icon show up that suggests there's more information. And if I double click the record, I can get in there and I can click see more. So that's okay, um, but it doesn't really provide me a lot of flexibility in terms of doing things I want to do. You know, maybe I want to be able to edit that from the list view. Maybe if I hover over this, I want to see some information. Or maybe I want to see a scroll bar to show that extra information. So that's the next thing that we're going to take a look at. So now we're going to get into some formatting to improve that appearance and get it to look the way that we want it to look and get it to do what we want it to do. All right, so this will be linked in the description. This is a template for multi-line text formatting. It is important to emphasize that you do need to use this with the plain text setting and not rich text, which is something that you cannot be formatted with the column formatting currently. Okay, so you're going to see a preview window in here that helps us understand uh, what's going on before I even do anything. Um, what I would recommend first is go ahead and uh, try these different theme options um, to just give you some different ideas on what's going to happen. Now let me describe some of these different options for you and then we'll tell you, show you how it works. The hover box option means that when you roll over the text box, you're going to see a hover window pop up giving you that full description. So you can optionally use that to show all the information. So that's an improvement in what we saw with the out of the box setting. Um, the other setting would be scrolling. So I would probably use one or the other, but not both at the same time. So of course, if there's a scroll bar, then I could scroll up and down through the content to see everything that way. And then yet another option is whether or not I want to be able to use inline edit. 
And if you do have inline edit, when you click on it, it's going to open up an editor and use this. It's similar to the grid view. Um, it lets me edit the content of that without having to go into the edit form in SharePoint. And then the bottom here, I can control basically how tall that box is going to be um, before it gets cut off. So let's try a couple of these settings just to see how this is going to look. So I'm going to do hover box and I set the max height to, let's say, 100. And then um, I'm going to copy and paste this code. All right, so here's my standard SharePoint output. I'm going to go to the column settings and format the column. And now I'm going to the advanced mode and I'll just paste that in. Okay, so that's exactly what I had in the preview. Okay, so you can see it's cut off. That's okay, because you can imagine I have multiple project record rows and I don't want this to stretch down the whole screen as I add more content. Okay, so when I hover over that, um, there's my hover box. The hover box can contain lots of content. So this is really handy. I can let this show everything that I need, um, but I'm not eating up this, all this real estate on the default view. Now also you'll notice when I'm hovering over this, there is a highlight window, it's green. It gives me a clue in the UI that when I click on it, it's editable. So this is like the edit and grid view, but I'm turning it on just for this field. Another advantage here is that I can scroll that window down and do whatever I want. So I can actually go into this box and uh, make an update that way. And all you have to do is tab out of that and it'll update and save. Okay. Um, if I want to go the scroll bar route, I can do that. So let's, let's go in that direction and um, let's turn off the inline editing and we'll even turn off the hover box. Maybe I don't want that. I just want the scroll bar just like that. Um, so you can adjust these options to get it to look the way that you want. Whoops. All right, let's get out of the, okay. And I'll do the uh, format this column and I will just paste in save okay and it's just going to be like the preview editor so now when i hover there's nothing going on but i do have a scroll bar to help me see the options now the width of course you can just adjust by dragging the um, column handlebar that's just default out of the box sharepoint functionality okay so those are some different options and let me go back and maybe we'll um, do one other thing Let's go ahead and turn off the scrolling and we'll just use hover box. We'll go with that for a default option before we go to the next part. Now you can change other things like the text color, um, border colors, um, all that kind of thing. I can use different font sizes. I'm going to stick with what I've got here. And um, there's a video tutorial. You can use that if you need more information. I'm going to go ahead and copy that back in so we can kind of move on to our next part. Okay. All right. So that's how I want it to be. Now we're going to go on to the next option, which has to do with this adding notes, basically like a log type function. Um, let's go ahead and go into our next template. Again, this will be linked below the video and this template's called note logging. Now what this is going to do is add up and append in notes to that log. Now, in order to use this, there are some requirements. You do need to show the modify by view. I'll explain, or column, I'll just explain why that is in a second. And you need to get the column name. So I have a text field that I called add note, and then I have the multi-line text field called note log, and I need to enter those over here. Add note, note log, okay, and I'm just going to start by um, with the default option so we can begin to see how this works right away. Okay, so I'm going to format this column. Again, this is a text column and I'm going to paste in my formatting code and you can see it update right away. Okay, now you see a little clear button that's optional to use. This will actually delete out the content of the box. So just to start over, I'm going to go ahead and do that. So now the note log content's gone. Okay, and I've already got some text in here, project kickoff, and I can go ahead and add that. And 
what we have here, it's got the name of the person who made the update, a date timestamp, when that occurred, and then whatever the note was. And that's how I'm making updates to this. So it's an alternative way to add to this. And I can do that right from the list view. Okay, so let me add another note. Um, scheduling review meeting for next week. Okay, as soon as I tab out of here, what's going on is it's saving that value into this text field. And notice that this add button is set to display only when I have a note to be added here. Okay, and watch what happens. When I click the button, it does two things. It appends to the log, and um, it also will clear this box out to get it ready for the next entry. Okay, and actually I said it depends. In this case, it's set to pre-pen. You have two modes. You can either have it make the new entry show up on top as the first entry, or you can have it go on the end as the last entry. I personally like it when it shows up on top because as I keep adding more options, it's going to keep scrolling down, and I like to see the first thing on top. Okay, I'm just doing some more just so you can see how that works. And then, of course, we have the scroll bar on top. Now, let me talk about some of the other options that are available to you. All right, so by default, it's in pre-pen mode. That means it's going to add the line on top. Um, I can alternatively do a pen mode, and that'll make it show up on the other side. Um, let's go ahead and copy that over, and I'll show you what I mean. So I just update this by going to format this column, paste that in, and now it's using the append mode. So let's try that. Let's say this will be the last line. Okay, so just hit tab out of there, and see how that put it on the bottom in this case? So that's really just your preference, um, however you wanna do that, okay? All right, so then the next thing we're gonna do is look at some of the other options in here. Now, we have the separator text. You notice that I have the um, pipe um, set. That's just a default setting. You could use whatever you want. So you could do a comma, or I could do a forward slash, um, colon, Whatever you like, um, that just will go between those values. And then there's the log format. So you can see how this is set up. It's going to show, you know, by default, it's the name, then a timestamp, and whatever the note is. But if you prefer that in a different order, or if you don't want all that information, you can just pick one of these different options according to your taste. Um, you can also change the um, text on the buttons. All right, so I could put a plus sign for adding. Um, and then the clear button. Now this actually removes all of the content from the log. That may be more than you want to allow for your users because they might accidentally get rid of something you don't want. So you might like it, you might not. You have the option to exclude that from the template if you want. And if that's the case, you just uncheck the button. And all this information is going to um, update as soon as I uh, make those settings changes. So I can just copy that over and then if I come back over here I'll just do format this column, paste it in, and there you go. So in this case I don't see any button because I don't have anything and I've gotten rid of the clear button but now I'm going to say time for the next task and now I've got the plus button and it's appending in there. Okay, so this is a really handy way to handle a couple of situations. One, it lets you not have to go into the edit form to make these updates. Um, the other thing is I can show all the information when I hover over it. So it can kind of handle a large amount of text. You can dynamically adjust the width of this very easily. And um, then I can also style this note add information, and that could be multiple lines in there, um, however I want to do that. Um, so you have options to change things like the hover color. You know, maybe I want that to, to uh, you know, be a different color for some reason. Um, you can adjust just the border color of when you're sitting in the form like that. All of those things are configurable just by picking these drop-down pickers. Um, Maybe I want to increase the font size a little bit to make it a little bit more readable. Um, however you want to do it. Or you can do things like just look through these default options 
um, to see what those look like. Um, there is a notes log in the bottom which kind of gives you some of the key information. It mentions, for example, that the modified by field is required in the view. And then also, um, you do need to make sure, as I mentioned, that you use the multi-line text with the plain text option. Um, it's not compatible with the uh, rich text option. So that's pretty much everything we wanted to show with those uh, templates. Those will be linked below the video. Um, I do want to just briefly mention, if you go to the uh, gallery, which will also be linked, um, you can see a preview of all the templates. Right now there's 73. You can sign up for free for 20 of the templates. Um, that's the light version. And um, if you scroll down through the content, um, you'll see the little green pills that'll tell you the things that you can get. And there's lots of awesome things where you can get the code. Um, so I hope that gave you some interesting ideas on how you can format multi-line text in SharePoint and also have your own custom logging function. Um, so um, those are just some of the things I wanted to show with you. So really the point of this video is basically to illustrate how we can make SharePoint be more user friendly when we have a large amount of information. Um, and also have the flexibility to make adjustments on that, you know, quickly and easily and be able to use it in multiple situations. Um, so starting with the rich text, or rich text, excuse me, multi-line text, we're showing how you can have a scroll bar or a hover box to help display that content. Um, how we can use the inline edit um, just to let users click right on that field to make quick updates. And then the other part, we're looking at basically a logging function. It's pretty frequent we have things like help tickets or projects or tasks where users need to put in little updates and notes to indicate what they're doing. And if we want people to use that, we need to really make it um, easy to work with. And so that's what we're doing is providing an interface to let them do that quickly. In this case, we're bypassing the whole edit form and just letting them work directly in the list view and setting up a smart system where it's automatically noting who the user was and the time they're making the update, things like that. Um, so hopefully you found these concepts useful and this is something that you can take a look at and um, try in your own environment. And um, if you don't yet have the um, subscription to the pro templates, I recommend just sign up for the light template and you can use um, 20 of these for free. And then you can still explore the options linked in the video to just take a look at how those work. Um, so thanks for taking a look at these options and we'll see you in the next video.